Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another week of live Q&A here on Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Mobrick, and with us, of course, is your incredible co-host, Bobby Parrish. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for being here. There are so many of you that are here ahead of time. And who are we and who are you and are you in the right place? So if this is your first time with us, welcome, welcome. I'm Athena Moberg. Bobby Parrish and myself show up here every week, and we do live Q&A, and we have a new topic every single week, and we serve the adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse community. This chat is very, very helpful for survivors of all type of abuse. We talk specifically about childhood sexual abuse oftentimes, but there are many of the videos here on this channel, and if you're following along on Twitter during this chat, there are many, many, many of the topics that we discuss that are great for all forms of child abuse. So welcome, welcome if you are an adult survivor of child abuse of any kind, and I'm so happy that you're here with us. If you're listening on a podcast platform and you're not on the Twitter chat, and you're not on YouTube or Roku TV, then welcome. I want to uh, let you know this is a video broadcast. You can find us easily by going to our YouTube channel or our Roku TV channel simply by searching for Trauma Recovery University. So if you're on iTunes or Stitcher or Spreaker or any of the podcast platforms, we're so happy that you're listening. You might be driving and that's totally fine. We'll make this podcast something that you can still receive information from and learn from and feel included in um, if for some reason you are not here hanging out with us face to face. So thank you for being here, you guys. Every single week we show up here on a different topic and this week's topic is authenticity. Living an authentic life, how is it that we become authentic humans? Um, are we um, finding ways to be authentic within ourselves, ways that are congruent within ourselves? How do we know who our authentic self really is? We get tons of emails, tweets, messages, Facebook posts. How do I know who I really am? I'm feeling a lot of anxiety. I feel like the me that shows up in public is not the me that I really am. And I don't know who the me is that I really am. I'm, I show up one way. I have all these different masks that I wear. I've been this way since I was a child. I never knew that it was tied to my childhood abuse. But now that I'm in my 30s and 40s and 50s or however old the person is that's messaging us at the time, they start to have these light bulb moments. And they start to realize that living their life in ways that are pleasing to other people and that are... Um, they're turning into the person that other people want them to be, it tends to get exhausting and it, it really uses up all of your emotional energy. And, and if that is you and you're feeling those things, then you might not be living in a congruent life. You might be living out of alignment with yourself. All of these terms are sort of, they might sound sort of woo woo or you've never heard of congruency or living within integrity with um, in alignment with yourself or with an integrity with yourself or living an authentic life if all these terms are very new to you that's that's totally okay we are going to walk through everything today step by step by step we're going to talk about what is authenticity just in its very basic form what is it to be authentic within ourselves? What do, what do authentic people, other people who are authentic, what do they look like? What does it mean to live in, um, congruent and with integrity or authentic to yourself? And how can we be, remain authentic to ourselves within our recovery? And what does it look like if you're in community with other people Is there and there's authenticity there or there's a lack of authenticity? We're going to break it down piece by piece by piece. We're gonna talk about authenticity within social media. We're, we're just going to break it down, and we're going to talk about step-by-step. Step. We're here to answer your questions live, so please tweet us using the hashtag NoMoreShame. If you have a question on the topic of authenticity and you are an adult survivor of childhood abuse. So I'm glad that you're here. We do have a lot of questions that have already been sent in. 
Um, one of the questions that was sent in that we will be covering tonight, I just want to mention it right out the gate, just in case this can start sort of a conversation over in our YouTube chat. By the way, if you're live on YouTube, there's a chat box over there, and I know that Matt's over there, and there's a whole group of people that show up every single week to hang out together, just like they do over on the Twitter stream using the hashtag no more shame. So there's, there's a question that came in from Phoenix, one of our our friends, our family that are here every single week and actively involved in our, our private um, safe support groups that we have online for survivors. And Phoenix says, how do you separate your authentic self from what just needs to be done or has to get done? Like, I don't want to go to work, but I have to go to work. So how do you separate your authentic self from what um, from what needs to get done or has to get done in the eyes of other people or within the realm of responsibility, like our role within a family. So we're going to answer that question right out the gate. I'm going to hand this over to Bobby. She's going to update us, give us a, a trigger warning and update us on some just some things that are going on in our community within Bobby and myself, within this particular uh, chat, hashtag no more shame in our weekly videos. And we're gonna go ahead and answer this question and all of your questions. So feel free to send your questions over in the YouTube chat where Matt will send me a screenshot of that or hashtag no more shame on Twitter. Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll answer as many of your questions as we possibly can tonight. I'm going to hand this over to Bobby Parrish. Take it away, Bobby. Ooh, lots of people already here with us on the Twitter stream. I'm so excited to see all of you. Some are people who've been with us for years. Um, and yes, we've been doing this for years. And some of you, um, this is just your first or second night here with us live um, on the chat stream and on the video broadcast. So it is always wonderful to see everyone who comes here um, every Monday night and they show up, they ask their questions. And the most magical thing is that they also interact with each other and they give each other strength and encouragement and support and feedback. So if you're watching this video um, and you're watching it on YouTube or you're listening to it on a podcast, I really encourage you to uh, come to a live broadcast um, Monday nights, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern. And even if you just want to watch the Twitter stream and watch the video, you don't want to participate, I invite you to do that because it is absolutely amazing. Um, and yes, changes, changes, changes. So um, I am starting the 1st of February, taking a 12 month sabbatical from my Monday night videos. Uh, very hard decision for me. But I am getting married and planning a move across the pond to um, be with my fiance and for us to have a family together with our kids. And right now in my life, it's time for me to focus on that, on making all of those preparations. And I hope that you all understand um, that this takes a lot of my time and attention an international move, immigration, um, not to mention planning a wedding. They're not little tiny blips in the ocean. Um, and I also need some time to do some writing. I've got two books that are about each halfway through and I really feel a deep, deep need to get those written and out on the market. So um, I love each of you. I love our community. I love these videos. I love Athena. Um, but this is my time to be authentic to myself and honor the things in my life right now, which are most important to me, um, which is my family and um, getting us all into one amazing place and getting more of my work into a written form and getting out into the world. Um, we have, Athena and I have created an amazing body of work. And I'm just going to, I'm not a, a bragger, but I'm going to do that just for half, here half a minute. Um, we have over 150 
probably chasing 200 hours of videos up on the Trauma Recovery University um, YouTube channel. And that, that, that in and of itself is amazing. Um, Athena is going to continue doing the Monday night videos in my absence while I'm on sabbatical. Um, and I will let you um, listen to her to see what changes she might make. And I'm so excited for her. And I'm so thrilled that she's got fresh ideas and we've got people who've stepped up and said, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. Can we do this? Can we do that? And um, I'm so thrilled to know that I can step away leaving things in such capable hands. And I'm anxious to see um, where she is going to lead as she moves forward. So um, thank you. I'll be here tonight. And then next Monday night will be my last night um, before I focus on some other things for a while. And this morning, um, we announced in CSAQT, which is our first Twitter chat of the week. That's um, Mondays at um, 10 o'clock Pacific. I have to do math in my head real quick. Um, 1 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern and 6 p.m. in the UK that Athena and I are stepping away from hosting that uh, beginning the 1st of February. She and I have been doing that for more than two years. And again, this community is amazing. And there are a lot of amazing people who can step up now and fill that spot. But both of us are going through some pretty significant life transitions. And so we're trying really hard, you guys, to model good self-care and to um, model authenticity in terms of when we say, you know, I really want to move into something else, that we do that. And we don't stick someplace where um, we know isn't the right place for us to be in this moment. So many exciting changes ahead. Um, I'm not falling off the edge of the earth, uh, but I just won't be here on Monday nights with everyone anymore. We will continue a sex abuse chat on Tuesday nights. That's um, been our, our longest um, running chat. That one started in January of 2014, three years now. That's pretty amazing. Um, but, um, so there we go, major announcements. And then, um, so if anybody has any questions or needs anything, uh, hit me up on Facebook or send me a tweet and we'll move forward. And the first thing I wanna do before we move back into content is issue a trigger warning. Tonight's broadcast is about childhood abuse. We will be referencing childhood abuse, dysfunction, neglect. So please take care as you listen and practice excellent self-care because you deserve it. And because it's really hard to learn material that you wanna learn when you're triggered. So if you get triggered, take care of yourself and go ahead and step away. We'll be here. If you close your laptop and open it up later, um, we'll still be here, just maybe in a recorded form if you're watching us live now. Um, so we would really encourage you to take care of yourself if you're triggered and go ahead and step away. If you need help now, if you're in crisis and there you're in the US or Canada, we encourage you to reach out to RAIN, which is the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. Their number is 1-800-656-HOPE, H-O-P-E. If you are in the UK, you can reach out to the Samaritans, fantastic organization that provides crisis mental health support throughout the United Kingdom. Their phone number is 116 one, two, three. And they can be reached via email at joe at samaritans.org. Joe, that's Joe, H-O. You can also tweet, not tweet, I don't know, maybe you can tweet the Samaritans, but you can also text them. <laughs> and their number is 07725. 
9090. So please take advantage of those resources if you need them. Um, it's hard. Recovery is hard. And moments of crisis and needing help urgently, I think, are part of the process sometimes for us. I know when I went through the worst of my recovery, there were times that I needed help and I needed it urgently. I needed some reassurance, some encouragement, some support. And if that is the case for you, it's okay. It doesn't mean you failed. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. So reach out for what you need because you deserve that. So here we are tonight and we're talking about authenticity. Um, and the reason that we chose the topic of authenticity is because it is something that survivors, anybody can struggle with authenticity, not just survivors. I, mean, I think at some point, every human being on the planet struggles with the issue of authenticity. And authenticity simply means being true, being genuine to who you are and what you believe. The reason that it's difficult for us as survivors is because most people who were raised in a functional childhood, they developed their identity when they were young. And they had the support of a healthy family system that said, yeah, yeah, does that sound good? Try that out. Oh, you want to try that out? Do that. Okay. And they tried out different activities and they developed their personality and they had support and encouragement throughout the process. So they weren't alone. And they eventually, over time, you know, probably for most of us, although our personality sets in, by the time we're about six or eight, I don't think our identity really gets too firmly set until um, probably, we're probably maybe in our early to mid 20s. But see, for those of us who were raised in abusive or chaotic homes, we spend our time surviving. You know, developing our identity is, you know, it's like, my what? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do that right now. I, I'm trying to just get through the next 24 hours without getting verbally, emotionally, physically, or sexually abused. Thank you very much. Um, it was a luxury developing your identity. Instead, we had to just fight to make it through. And so then here we come in adulthood and we haven't the slightest notion of who we are. Instead, the skill we have, which we developed in our childhood, was the skill of being able to contort and color ourselves according to which way we thought people wanted us to act and believe and speak because that made us least likely to get abused, right? Most of us as children learned early on that it wasn't in our best interest to voice a want or a need. It was in our best interest to behave and speak exactly like our abusers wanted us to because that was the best thing for our safety. And so we learned, I have this image in my head, right? So it's like our abusers had a box. And so we did everything we could. That box may have been two and a half sizes smaller than we were, but we did everything we could to contort and pretzel ourselves up to fit in that box. Because we thought that if we fit in that box, we would be safe and we would be loved and we would be approved of. And we took that, that's what we took into adulthood, okay? People from healthy households, they got to take their identity. We took the capacity to contort ourselves to meet other people's expectations because we thought, rightfully so, okay? There's nothing wrong for feeling that. That's what you learned as a child. So if you have this skill and you're out there listening to me right now and you're beating yourself up, don't do that because that's what you learned, that's what you were taught. That's a survival skill. Anything that you learned in order to survive, I say good for you. But now we have to see it and we have to recognize it 
then we have to change it, okay? Because you deserve to have an identity that is all your own. You deserve to know who you are, what you believe, what do you want out of life, what's your passion? Um, you know, what? who do you want to hang out with? Who do you not want to hang out with? What kind of relationships do you want to have? What kind of job do you want to have? Where do you want to live? You know, all of those are things that we as adults now need to figure out. But see, we don't get to do it like other people did. We don't get to do it surrounded by a loving family that says, oh, look, fell down there. It's okay. Get back up. Try over here now. We'll support you. It's okay. You know, we're here unconditionally. Love you a bunch. Keep going. You're doing great. We're doing it on our own. So that is the big stepping stone for survivors. Once we can fill in that piece that's our identity, then we get to step into the authenticity part. Then we get to develop that congruency between what we believe and what we project to the world, between what we believe and what we do for a living, where we invest our time. And so tonight we're talking about authenticity and how do we do that? How do we align ourselves in the world with what goes on inside of us? Um, and probably at some point, uh, we'll talk about identity. You know, how do you, how do you put all those puzzle pieces together now as an adult um, without the benefits that other people had? And um, we build our own family and build our identities, um, just like the way that uh, people from healthy families did just maybe a decade or two or maybe three or four later. So I noticed, Athena, that there are lots of peeps here tonight. Do people have questions already? Yes. Um, I want to make sure we answer Phoenix's question. Um, I want to read you a few statements. Um, before we answer Phoenix's question, but I want to answer Phoenix's question because I know that by answering that question, we're going to answer a lot of questions. So absolutely. Um, but I want to read you some comments that are going on. Um, hey, Jen. Jen just Jen just got here. You're not late, honey. You are right on time. So um, for those of you that are struggling to get the link on the website. Do me a huge favor. I'll fix the one page link and I'll fix the website link. I must not have saved it properly. User error, me user, not you user. Um, my error, not your error. You haven't done anything wrong. But if you're looking for the video, Matt posted a link in the Twitter stream, or you can go to youtube.com forward slash trauma recovery university TV, or you can um, simply just search for trauma recovery university on Google and click on the YouTube link so and you'll find us right there so my apologies for the for the bad link there um, there are some comments here Grace Hope says I am so afraid if you knew the real me you wouldn't like me either because I don't like me or and then I'm sure there's more Sharon says I was abused for so long I'm not really sure who I am I was told who I was for so long it makes it difficult. If you've been on this channel for any length of time, these statements resonate deeply with you. This is very, very common, and I have some interesting comments here from someone who was not sexually abused as a child, but is here and has incurred a different form of abuse, even in adulthood. This has a lot to do with the grooming process, which I will talk about here briefly as well. So Heather Tuba says, you deserve to have an identi identity that is all your own. Beautiful statement, Bobby. I agree. Bobby said just a few moments ago that we deserve to have an identity that is all our own. You know, we are uniquely gifted. We are, we are each created uniquely. We, there is not one person in this whole world that is just like you. Did you know that your thumbprint is the only thumbprint in the whole wide world that is just like yours? Um, there, there, are, there are things about you, personality traits things about you that are unique to only you. There's so much about you that is only you. You deserve to have an identity that is all your own and not one that was handed to you by an abuser or an enabler or society or quote unquote friends or someone who is manipulating you. 
Amy Thompson, who is the co-host of Domestic Violence Chat, has said something very, very key. We are taught that our vulnerability and who we are at our emotional core is bad and worthy of shame, so we hide ourselves. Authenticity is difficult for many of us, in large part because of grooming and conditioning from our abusers, regardless if it is childhood sexual abuse or domestic violence. And uh, let it, Matt says, letting ourselves be authentic can be scary. Fear of being judged or showing who we really are. Heather says, children need nurture to develop identity. Child abuse steals that. That is so perfectly put and so simple, but it bears repeating. Child abuse steals our identity. I just want you to really grasp that for a moment and give yourself some grace if you are struggling. Why can't I be authentic? Why am I so fake? I was told that I was fake my whole life. I never know who I really am. I just wish I could figure out who I really am. Who's really me? What do I really like? What do I really want? Who do, who do I want to be when I grow up? What, what friends do I want to um, hang out with? What do I like for dinner? What, what are my favorite colors? What kind of clothing do I like to wear? Am I a girly girl? Am I a tomboy? Do I like long hair? Do I like short hair? What do I really like? How do I like to talk? What smells do I like? Do I like bubble gum? Do I like my fingernails painted? Do I love to wear dresses or do I love to wear pants? Do I like to drive a truck or do I like to drive a, a little sports car type vehicle? Do I like to take the bus? Do I like to travel? Do I like spicy food? Do I like cereal and what about showering? Do I like showering or do I just struggle with taking care of myself and showering because there was so much bad stuff that happened to me when I was a child that had to do with the bathroom. I was yelled at if I was going to the bathroom. I was yelled at if I took too long. I was yelled at if I was showering. I was yelled at if I wasn't clean enough. I never felt like I could be clean enough. I always stayed in there a long time trying to scrub off the yuck because I was so I was abused by so many people. There is so much that we don't know about ourselves and it is all so connected that I really want you guys to just show yourself some patience and some grace and some kindness because if you don't know who you really are and there were some other comments here as well being Amy says being authentic requires being open with your vulnerability which can be particularly difficult for trauma and abuse survivors and August says I can't be honest with anyone because I am scared of being hurt or killed I need to protect myself so I lie a lot and I hate it and that is a difficult position to be in anyone here on this on this YouTube channel knows what it's like to be a survivor of severe abuse or child abuse or long-term abuse or even abuse during adulthood and fearing for your very life is very real it's not just something that we make up like oh that scared me half to death or I'm so afraid afraid of for my life like when August says I can't be honest I need to protect myself um, I'm scared of being hurt or killed I know what that feels like I was married to someone who was very 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 abusive and I was raised in a family where murder was talked about and touted like you know what I did to Alan so-and-so so you don't want to mess with me and so I knew that people that I lived with and were being raised by were capable of murder. In fact, they had harmed animals and murdered animals in front of me so that they could get me to obey whatever it is they wanted me to do, with o obey them and get to do whatever they wanted me to do because I didn't want to be murdered like the animal. And I didn't want them murdering any more animals. So you guys, these are very real things that are not often talked about. And when you're raised in an environment where there is um, deranged people or when people are possibly personality disordered or, or very severely disturbed and they're harming animals or they're threatening you or phones are getting ripped off of their off of the wall or you got to run to the neighbors to see if you can call 911 or there's blood or there's weapons or there's drugs or there's things. These are not things that just happen in movies. Movies are made about these kind of things because they happen in real life and that's how they got the idea for it. It's not just stuff that happens in movies. 
So I really just want to validate each and every one of you that are struggling with authenticity and who am I? What do I like? What do I not like? Who am I like? Who do I like to hang out with? What do I even want out of my life? What do I believe? What do I believe? What do I believe? Who do I believe in? And and where do we even learn that? So even and Heather mentioned something super key here that I really um, want to really drive home. I personally struggle with is this a survivor thing or is this a human thing? Like I struggle to know like does everybody struggle with this or is this just something I struggle with because I was raised in an environment where I didn't think I was going to survive. Now I can look back and I also want to validate some of this. Okay. Before I say I can look back and I and I want to and I want to go there for a second. I want to say this to you guys. If you were involved with any type of abuse when you were a child and you're sitting there as your adult self and you're going, well, here I am. I'm a grown adult and I'm looking at the abuse I went through when I was a child and I'm thinking, well, why couldn't I have hid in that place or ran out that door or called that phone number or gotten away or called this uncle or went and ran away with that cousin or what about the, the stick with the, the bandana hanging with like we all like, you know, visualized and fantasized about running away with the stick and the bandana and why couldn't I have done this and I could have easily gone to the store and bought that food since I was so hungry and there wasn't any food in the house and with our adult minds, we're sitting back here just super cool with our adult reasoning skills going, <laughs> that younger version of myself was dumb. Why didn't they run or run away or feed themselves or call somebody or phone a friend? I mean, th this is not a game show. And guess what? Light bulb. Like, seriously, here's a newsflash. When we are children, you guys, I've sat back so many times and I've shamed my younger version of myself because I'm like, hello, I knew that the neighbors weren't going to be home. Why did I go there? Why didn't I run the other way down that side of the street? And it's like I sit back here with my adult reasoning skills and I project all of my knowledge and all of my 43 years of wisdom on that little girl that was seven years old, eight years old, 10 years old, 11 years old. And I'm like, why didn't she do what I would like her to do? Why didn't she do what I think she should have done? Well, the answer is because child abuse robbed me of my identity. I wasn't Athena, a 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13 year old little girl who's pretty smart. You know, she gets A's, mostly A's. She plays 12 instruments. She's super musically inclined. She sings first soprano and chorus. She's super awesome at everything except for math. And she's smart enough to know that she shouldn't have gone to that neighbor's house. She should have ran the other way. And she should have spoken up to the police officers when they were standing at her front door. It's her fault that she didn't get out of there. But you guys, the, 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 the trauma responses that we've discussed on this YouTube channel so often have so much to do with our authentic selves. Like our reptilian brain, the very core of who we are, the, the trauma response that is something that we automatically go to, like are you a person that freezes when something happens that scares you? Or are you a person that, that fights back and yells? Or are you a person that tries to talk your way out of it or reason your way, wait, 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 wait it's all good, it's, everything's gonna be fine, I'm gonna make it all better. Or are you the type of person that just gets the heck out of there? So whatever type of person you are, if you're a if you're a fight or if you're a flight or if you're a fawn and you try to talk your way out of it or if you're a freeze and you just don't know what to do, you guys, that is not your authentic you self that you get to like just go to the grocery store and hang out. That's the very basic version, but like the, the factory setting of who you are in the midst of life or death. And that is what you have come to know. You have come to know the life or death version of you. But now that you're an adult, and you're hopefully not going to be stuck in a life or death situation for much longer if you're watching this channel. I hope and I pray that you find a way to get safe and surround yourself with safe people. You will then be able to take all your years of wisdom and all the things that you've learned on YouTube channels and all these books you've read and all the blog posts you've read and, and all the podcasts you've listened to and you're able to apply all that to, to what you're doing now. But if we project all of our wisdom 
of our years that we've had now on that little girl or little boy version of ourselves, then we are impeding our progress to discovering our authentic self. It is keeping us from becoming authentic and discovering who we really are because we're holding our younger version of ourselves who's still in there somewhere kind of freaking out. We're holding them to some unrealistic expectation and we're holding ourselves, our adult selves to some unrealistic expectation. It takes time to figure out who we are. It takes time to figure out what we like and do we like spicy food and do we like to travel and do we like to sit in the, the cozy chair or do we like it hot? Do we like it cold? Do we like boots? Like it takes a while to figure out who we are. And a lot of kids, when they're growing up in a safe environment, they figure out when they're five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 years old, if they like peanut butter or if they're allergic to chocolate or if raisins don't agree with them or if they like pants or dresses or if they like going for a drive through the country or going for a run or riding a bicycle. Those are things that people that live in a safe environment when they're children, they learn those things when they're five, six, seven, ten, twelve 10, 12 years old. But if you're fighting for your life or you're in the middle of a domestic violence situation or you're being trafficked or exploited, you don't have time to do anything regarding who am I? Who's my authentic self? Like you don't have time for that. There's no time for figuring out if you like flowers or if you're musically inclined. There's no time for that. There's only time to fight, flight, freeze or fawn so that you can protect yourself and stay alive. And I just, I'm hoping and praying that you guys can receive that. Someone out there needed to hear this. Someone out there needed to know that they weren't expected to know everything at age seven. Where's Dominique? Is she here? Because I know she would be high-fiving me right now. You guys, no. we, I miss you, Dominique. Hopefully you'll see this. <laughs> but you guys, the way that we are going to discover our authentic selves, whoop, wrapping it all back around to Phoenix's question, how do we know our authentic selves versus like what needs to be done? It's something that you feel pulled towards. You feel it's a joy. It fills you up rather than draining you. Um, it's something that you feel is in alignment with your core beliefs and who it is that you really um, are comfortable with. And it takes a lot of time to figure out who your authentic self really is. Patience, patience, patience. If you're just beginning your recovery journey from, um, from, uh, child abuse or from domestic violence or any type of abuse it is going to take you a while to figure out what you like and what you don't like what you prefer and what you don't prefer what triggers you and what doesn't trigger you what you love and what you don't love and the best way to figure out and discern and sort of um, like decide the difference between is this my authentic self that I actually love or is this something that I'm doing out of obligation? This is what we taught in the boundaries video. Harriet, if you could pop up the boundaries video right here, that would be amazing. Boundaries. Thank you so much, Harriet. Um, and there are so many other videos that I could be referring to, but I'm going to refer to boundaries because this is the way, Phoenix, for you to figure out if something is in alignment with your authentic self versus you're doing something out of obligation, whether it's a, it's a, it's something that's being, uh, you're being told to do or it's expected of you. And that is if you have an internal yes, matching your external yes. Or if you have a, an external yes, I'll do that. But on the inside, you're like, I really don't want to do that. Then you know that that's not in line with your authentic self. And it's all about having good interpersonal boundaries and emotional boundaries within yourself. That's my answer to Phoenix's question. And I know we have several other questions as well. But Bobby, I would love to hand this over to you and hear your thoughts on the answer to Phoenix's question. Because I think that Phoenix's question really encompasses a lot of the questions that I'm seeing on the Twitter stream. And that is, you know, discerning what it is that is in alignment with our authentic selves versus something that we're doing out of obligation or something that we feel like we should be doing, like we're shooting ourselves all over the place. So why don't you take it from here, Bobby, and I'll take over the Twitter feed. Well, you know, I think that's an interesting question because it, it brings, it takes us, it takes my mind to places. Um, sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do. Sometimes we have to do things that, 
um, are not necessarily alignment with what we like and what we love to do, but they're in alignment with our values. Okay, so um, I have a job that I hate. This is an example. I have a job. I don't like this job. Uh, it doesn't feed me um, emotionally or intellectually. Um, it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me, it's a chore. But what it does do is support my values of taking care of myself and my children. And that's important. We need, we all deserve to have a roof over our head and food on our table. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna look for another job. I'm gonna keep my eyes open. For some of us, you know, there aren't any other jobs out there. So this we have is the best that we can do. Um, so it sometimes it's like the hierarchy of authenticity. You know what I mean? And, and it goes from, you know, what are we like? What's our passion to, you know, what are our values? What are we, what do I really need to do in this moment? Um, when I put my ex-husband through law school, um, he and I married right after we got our bachelor's degrees and um, we moved so that he could go to law school. And our agreement was I would put him through law school and then he would put me through getting my master's degree in counseling. And I took a job teaching kindergarten, loved it, no money. I mean, like any bitty tiny bit of money. Um, and so I saw a job come up for working for the state government, processing workers' compensation claims. And I applied and I got the job. First time in our marriage, we had a decent amount of money. Uh, and for a while, I liked the job. I was good at it. But heaven have mercy, did it suck the soul right out of me? Um, because it was all about accepting or denying injured workers' claims. And we did a lot of denying according to corporate directive. And there is nothing, there are few things worse than spending nine, 10 hours a day um, fielding phone calls from injured workers who are hurt and trying to make it through. They're off work. Um, they're probably in the process of losing their home, no money for groceries, medical bills not being taken care of because we denied their claim. And then you're getting the angry phone calls from the doctor's offices because we denied the claim so we're not paying their bills. Um, and it's just, you know, and then the claims go into litigation and it was just a soul blackening job because it just, it went against everything of who I am. Um, and when my husband graduated from law school, um, it didn't turn out that I was able to quit and go back um, and get my master's degree. And that reality of knowing I was stuck in that job um, and the the harm that I had allowed to come to me, to my, um, my emotions, to my spirit, to my soul because of that job uh, led to a, a serious um, bout of depression. And the first one that I ever had that required that I had to be hospitalized. Um, so it takes a toll. And the thing is right, if it's not in alignment, if it's, I'm doing this should, I'm doing this could, um, I have no choice, then we need to step back and see if maybe we do have other choices. But I understand if you're working a job that you need to work right now in order to pay the bills. I understand if you're living in a situation right now which isn't absolutely positively ideal, but it's a stepping stone to something else that is ideal. That's, you know, calling you out on doing those kinds of things. That's not, 
that's not what we're talking about tonight. What we're talking about is you doing the best you can on a daily basis to live in alignment with your values and your beliefs and your hopes and your dreams and your needs. And placing those, you know, on a ladder of uh, hierarchy and doing the best you can every day to meet those. So I guess my answer would be sometimes you got to do things you don't want to do because it meets with our values. But do that as least as you can and for as short a period of time as you can. Um, and hopefully doing that piece will help you get someplace better and get someplace where you feel much more in alignment with yourself um, quicker. So, Athena, what other questions do we have? Questions, right. concerns, raise <laughs> hands. I have, I've been um, responding and, and sort of retweeting everybody. Kalisha, I think you're amazing. I so value you and appreciate you. I haven't had a chance to to, uh, to tweet you. And um, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to tweet you and say that. Heather says she hates cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sharon says, I'm trying to be the real me. I was a people pleaser for so long. I've been finding myself for about 10 years trying to please me. Sharon, I am cheering you on and high-fiving you. That's awesome. Finding your authentic self and finding who you really are and what your identity really is apart from your abuse can feel like a lifelong journey. And, you know, to be honest, you guys, it kind of is a lifelong journey. I'm not saying it's going to take you until you're 90 to find out what you really like. Um, Heather, for instance, knows that she hates cereal. You know, like not all of us. It took me so long to know what I liked and what I didn't like. Like I knew that I didn't like something, but I couldn't remember why. Or I, I said this morning during chat, I distinctly remember a time when my husband and I were very, very, very first dating. You guys, this is so key. This is so real. Um, and this is right on, on tagging on to what you said, Sharon. My husband and I were first dating, and he asked me if I was hungry or if I was thirsty. And I was sitting there, you guys, and I didn't know. I didn't know. I was in the, mid, the middle of a complete meltdown. Um, I, I went, just to give you a little bit of uh, background, okay? So I went straight from being raised in an abusive home from age zero, if we're being real, <laughs> age zero until the age of 17. And then I went from 17, I married my son's dad. I had my son. My son's dad left. I was a single mother for 17 years. 17 more years, okay? Then my son turned down a full ride, almost full ride academic scholarship and went into the military during a time of war before we backed out of Iraq. I was spinning. I didn't even know. So I went from being in abuse to being in abuse to being fully responsible for myself and another human in and out of abusive relationships, abusive romantic relationships for years. In fact, if we're really, really, really being real, my husband, Jim, is the only interpersonal romantic relationship I have ever, ever, ever been in, ever, that wasn't lopsided in some way. Like, I don't want to say abusive because there were some relationships that I was in with very... Um, kind and loving and wonderful guys, really wonderful guys. But since they were wonderful and I was only used to abuse, they were very, 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 very nice. And I was like running the other way because I was like, what is this? Like, is this bad? I don't know what this is. This isn't normal. I'm so used to this. And if my family's being super duper nice to me, they're usually luring me into something so that they can stab me with something or attack me or use me or exploit me or hurt me. So you 
nice guy or being nice and are you luring me so that you can exploit me because I've already had enough of that so I don't really know what you're all about and so you guys I went from abuse 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 wasn't really sure wasn't really sure I was a single mother I was in and out of abusive relationships very very lost completely living a crazy life to all of a sudden my son was gone he was my whole world for 17 years every single day and he was gone and then this guy I'm dating is so sweet and so kind and he's like what can I get for you are you hungry are you thirsty can I help how can I help what can I do I just want to be sweet to you and I'm like I, 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 I don't know I don't know I don't know if I'm hungry I don't know if I'm thirsty I don't know anything all I know is I'm just sort of sitting here and I'm frozen in time like you guys if you've ever felt that way chances are you've been traumatized <laughs> and trauma is real and trauma is cumulative if you've been on this channel for any length of time you know that trauma is compounded it's cumulative each layer of trauma cements to the layer beneath it making it stronger and so I was dealing with the trauma of my only child being sent off to the military during a time of war and that was triggering every other trauma that I had ever had in my whole entire life the stuff I remembered and the stuff I didn't remember which was a lot so um, the the whole process like shy Sharon is saying I've been finding myself for about 10 years I've been doing that Sharon I've been doing that right alongside you since 2010 so seven years almost seven years I've been doing the same thing for almost seven years and I can honestly tell you that I'm discovering some things about myself I never knew how to cook I was never taught how to cook I thought I hated cooking turns out I love cooking I'm learning how to cook and I like it and I like smoothies I didn't know I liked them I like fruit I like vegetables I like I like things that I didn't know that I liked and it's very liberating and very freeing um, grace hope says how do you even start to be authentic when you don't even know who you were who you are and I'm so afraid of who I will become this is something that I want to hand over to Bobby because I've been on my soapbox for for far too long I would love to hear Bobby's sweet voice and her wisdom um, grace all the one word I will give you is that it's just gonna take some time honey it's gonna take some time you're not gonna turn into a different person you will always recognize yourself and you will always find a way to to love that that version of you and you'll never stray off into something if it's really your authentic self you're going you're going to love it and it's going to feel amazing but Bobby I would love to hear your wisdom um, on Grace Hope's question which is how do you even start to be authentic when you don't even know who you were who you are and I'm so afraid of who I will become Bobby um, excellent question I want to I want to back up for just a minute and let everyone know maybe I'll back up or say the side issue identity can be fluid okay so just because at this moment we believe or feel one thing doesn't mean that five years from now we can't believe or want something different okay our personality is kind of a construct that's set a little solidly in our brain at the time we're six to eight years old identity though identity is more of a choice um, in some ways not talking about gender identity see a separate video for that one um, so I, an identity is fluid so don't beat yourself up if at age 35 you strongly want to head in this direction but at age 40 you're like wow I don't want to go that direction anymore I want to go over here that's okay identity is fluid okay so how do you even begin to figure out what your identity is um, you do as an adult what you should have been allowed to do as a child which is explore okay that's what we did as children um, the language of children is play that's what play was was exploration we tried things out how do we like this do we like that you know 
um, the younger we were, the more we played by ourselves. And then we got a little older and we, we were able to do parallel play, which means two children playing next to each other. Get a little older, okay, now we're interacting with people. So the first thing that you do is then spend some time just with yourself. And you do some exploration. You know, you walk through the world with as clear and unobstructive eyes as you can and say, okay, huh, do I like that? Would I like to try that? Uh, hmm, the community college is offering a class on um, karate. That might, I might like to try that. That might be kind of cool. Or, um, you know, the, the art center is, is having a class on paper making. That's always kind of intrigued me, and I, I want to learn how to do that. Um, or look at the people who you admire and, and see what kind of qualities that they possess. Is that something that you might want to possess? Is that something you might want to develop inside you? Look for those things that, you know, these days resonate is kind of a catchphrase, and I understand that. It's kind of a cliche. But look for those things that make that inner part of you go, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Look for things that light your passion. Look for things that make you feel peaceful and calm. Okay? Emotions are the 100%, you know, uh, what's the word that I want? Camp Compass. I just thought I said campus. Compass in our life. Okay? So emotions should not set your compass. But there's something that will if affirm that you are going in the right direction. Okay? So spend some time exploring, looking on your own. And then come alongside others who would be safe and supportive for you. And begin to engage with others around activities, topics, values, beliefs that you think you might want to share. Um, and talk, just talk to people. You know, I, I, I think that I might want to go try that, um, that Buddhist temple this weekend. You know, I've studied a little Buddhism and I, I think that might be kind of cool. I think I'm gonna try that out. So you go and you interact with people and you watch. Okay, we survivors are excellent watchers, right? We're, cause we're hyper vigilant. Watch, listen, if it doesn't resonate, oop, catchphrase, um, try something else. If you want to try it for two or three weeks, if you want to try it for two or three months, have to try and figure out what it means for you. Okay. You want to join a, a cycling club, you know, start interacting with people, getting a feel, you know, this is something I might like doing. This is a crowd of people who I might want to like interacting with on a regular basis. Um, and as you put little things into place, it's it's kind of like building, you know, one of those lovely human pyramids, um, or even a that's not a good that's not a good analogy a rock wall, right? So you place a rock, you place another rock, you place another rock, you go up a level, you lay a little mortar, mortar in grout in between the cracks, mortar on top, lay another block, lay another block, lay another block. Don't look at the whole wall, the whole space where the wall is supposed to be and go, holy moly, I can't do that. That's overwhelming as heck. One block at a time. Okay. One piece. Yeah, this is something I like. Yeah, this is something I like. If you don't like it, just chuck it. You know, there's no need to, to even spend another time looking at it. Just chuck the rock behind you. It might be somebody else's. You know, they might be walking. I go, oh, a rock. Oh, I like this rock. It's going in my wall. Okay, so maybe it's not your rock, but maybe it's somebody else's rock. Um, and just keep putting it in. And you, don't focus on the big space you have to fill up. Focus on the little rock size building block at a time. Um, and I think I heard several people tonight talk on the Twitter stream about that concept of if people really knew me, they wouldn't love me. But see, that's what your abuse taught you. 
That's what your abuser said to you. That's what your abuser's grooming told you. Because it was essential that they had you believing that you were a horrible person. Because horrible people feel ashamed. People who hate themselves feel ashamed. And people who are ashamed don't speak up. They don't tell other people that they're being abused. They don't look for someone who will protect them and take care of them and keep them out of this abusive situation because they don't feel they're worth it. So every time you hear that voice in your head that says you are a horrible human being, nobody's going to want to know you, tell it to shut up. Truthfully, interrupt that statement. And with a blatant shut up is an abrupt signal to shut that voice down. Okay? I, I find it's really hard to shut that voice down by saying, please, could you could you just shh, shh, pipe down? Just, hey, Bobby. You know, to, yes? Um, Broken Childhood says, I love to share my story. If others see you heal and they see you have a happy life, they can heal also. You have to feel to heal. Yes. And Kathy says, it's only when you heal and you start to feel whole that you realize that you didn't feel this way ever before there you go exactly um yeah if we have never experienced authentic attachment growing up then it is all new for us no attachment is if um within a family equals no authenticity um, you don't individuate when you grow up with abuse. You don't ever find your identity if you grow up with abuse. Individuate, like find out who you are as an individual. Yeah, that's what that, that's what that means. Individuate, right? Find uh -huh. out who you are as an individual. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Separate from who am I separate from my parents and my family, or if you know in a relationship, who am I separate from my partner? Yeah. So people who are codependent on one another have not individuated from each other. Ooh, yes. let's mix our jargon. Ooh, I love that though. That is so true. Cause and that co there, that speaks a lot. I mean, we have that video on codependency, and that was a really really big one. Harriet, could you pop up the video on codependency right here? That would be amazing. Thank you, Harriet. Um, hey, Bobby, broken chat. Childhood says, my little girl is five, and I have two boys now, eight and seven. There is no way they would know better unless I told them to say no, and touching privates is wrong. I did not have that. Yes. So we can't beat ourselves up when we're reached the age of adulthood, and there's so many things that we don't know. Those are the things that our parents should have taught us, our family should have supported us through. So if you don't know them, that's because you weren't taught them. So here we are, and I think we've talked about this before, parenting ourselves in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, because we didn't get it when we were kiddos, um, even though we deserved it. Yeah. Um, there's, there's something going on over on YouTube right now, Bobby. There's a great discussion on YouTube, um, in fact, I don't think it's right now. It was actually four minutes ago, so it's probably still going on. Um, it's a discussion about dissociation and how that plays a part in our ability to be authentic because since we dissociated during our trauma, we don't always know who we are because our memories are so cloudy. It all is connected. Harriet, could you please pop up right here the video on dissociation? Oh, Bobby, I would love your comments on that because that is so huge. This dissociation is a coping strategy and, and whether or not it, you know, it kept us alive when we were a child, which it did or not, like as an adult, when we still dissociate, we end up shaming ourselves because we're not going, wow, thank you, dissociation. You kept me alive for all these years. You're going, who am I? Oh my gosh, how much time did I lose? And then there's also dissociating um, to the point where it's unsafe and you're you know, crashing your car and you're harming other people and like that's, you know, 
that's typically something where you're seeing a helping professional and you're diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder or something even um, more serious. But Bobby, I would love to hear your thoughts on on the the connection between dissociation and finding our authentic selves because if we're to find our authentic selves, we have to learn to trust ourselves and to trust ourselves. It's very hard to trust ourselves if we, if we struggle to trust ourselves because of our tendency to, dis to dissociate. So any tips and strategies on, on how our survivors can get around that? Well, you know, I, as you talk about that, Athena, it occurs to me that, okay, most coping mechanisms that we learned as a child become a double edged sword as an adult. Okay. Yes, they saved us. Sometimes still, they really, they step in and they help us cope. But on the other side, you flip it to the other side of the coin, dissociation as an adult is not a very functional strategy. Okay? And again, we can't develop our identity when we're not present, right? Um, other coping mechanisms, same thing. Say, for instance, uh, I like to drink. Okay? Maybe it helped me escape some of the pain from my childhood. But when I'm drinking and I'm intoxicated, how in the world am I supposed to develop my identity? Right? Because I'm impaired. If you um, numb the bad, you also numb the good. That's right. So again, those coping mechanisms can do good things, but we pay a price. And one of the prices that we pay is the inability to develop our identity. Um, and for some people though, and I think we're seeing a little bit on this, about a little bit of this on the Twitter stream, is some fear. People are afraid to develop their identity. Um, I think a couple of people have addressed fears of, well, if I become who I really am, then I think some people aren't gonna like me anymore, or I might upset or anger some people who I love. So yeah, I really want to validate that. For some people, developing your your identity brings with it a sense of real fear. Um, and then there's the, well, who am I going to become? I spent my entire life trying not to become. You know, many of us have, have invested a significant amount of energy in staying away from who we don't want to be. We don't want to be like our parents. We don't want to be angry. Um, for me, it was, I don't want to, I, I grew up taking care of my mother. I was her caretaker because she struggled to cope. I didn't want to put anyone I loved in that same position. So I spent a large part of my adulthood developing the identity of not being dependent. So when you don't want to be, you can't figure out who you want to be. So complex, yes, very complex issue. Um, and again, I would just encourage you to take small steps, itty bitty tiny steps at a time, and do them alongside people who are safe and who you know have your back, regardless of um, what, what might be said or done, uh, it, it takes a while, um, one step at a time, one block in the wall at a time, and it's okay to put a block up there and then decide a few minutes later, now nah, that really wasn't what I wanted, pry it back up, let it go for you to find it's the wall that it really belongs in, so, um, Athena, shall I put up the one page? I think that's a great idea. Um, while you're getting that ready, I wanted to share. Um, uh, Shy Sharon says she was never allowed to dance as a child. Now she absolutely loves to dance. She dances to all sorts of music. Her friends have even called her the dancing queen. And Megan says, Bobby is reading my mind growing up, if anyone, uh, reading my mind while I was growing up. If anyone gets to know the real me, they won't really love me. Um, and I've felt that way too. So many of us have felt that way. Well, that's then, what we were taught. Well, yeah, like we were taught that we were unlovable. You guys, we were taught that we were unlovable. And if we would have been lovable, 
that what we deduced, what we deduced as children is if this, this is what the whole deal boils down to right here, folks. If we were lovable, we would have been worth rescuing. We would have been worth saving. We would have been worth protecting and we wouldn't have been abused. Period. Right. That's what our child's mind reasoned. That's which, the big truth. Yeah. And it's, it's a it's, lie, but it was the big truth that we ascertained yeah. as a child. Correct. It's, it is. It's the truth that we ascertained as a child. It's the truth that we clung to because it helped us to make sense of it all when we were children. So, and it's just, it's a lie. It's one of the lies that our abuse tells us. So um, we are going to switch to the one page right now. I'm so grateful you guys have stuck around. Here we are. Um, for about the next 15 minutes, we're going to have a teaching portion, and then we're going to get you guys out of here on time. Okay. Um, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Um, this is the one page. We do one every week um, along with our videos. You can find them over on the No More Shame Project website. There's a tab up at the top that says Downloadables. Just tap on that, and it will get you access to all of our one pages, um, more than 100 of them now. And you can print them off, save them in a file, um, whatever it is that makes you happy. So here we go. Authenticity, authenticity in one page. Authenticity is defined as being true, accurate, and genuine. Authentic people are those who are interacting with themselves and the world around them in ways which reflect who they truly are and what they truly believe. Authentic people are in integrity with themselves because how they are portraying themselves to be is in line with who they believe themselves to be. For survivors of childhood abuse, authenticity can often be a difficult concept to grasp because we do not know who we truly are. Many of us never got to establish an identity of our own due to a chaotic and dysfunctional upbringing. While other children were exploring the world and trying on different characteristics, goals, and beliefs to discover who they were, we were struggling just to survive the day in the midst of the chaos and abuse. Even if our life was not a daily battle to protect ourselves, we rarely had support or guidance to develop our identity. Instead, we were told how others wanted us to be, what they liked us to act like, believe, or say. We were not valued for who we were, but rather for what we could do for our abusers and our enablers. Okay, so that's a critical thing. That's one of the reasons why we grow up um, as, as Derek mentioned and somebody else mentioned on the Twitter stream, to be chameleons. Because we learned that we were, our value was becoming what someone else wanted of us. And so we learned how to contort and twist and color ourselves to change by the moment according to who we were with and what they wanted. As a result, most of us grew into adulthood never having had the luxury of building an identity. Instead, we have become adept at being who we perceive others want us to be, of molding and contorting ourselves. We are vulnerable to predators because we easily assume the role expected of us. Our identity is empty and this vacuum makes it easy for us to be manipulated and exploited. Okay, I really want to emphasize that point. This is one of the reasons why survivors are so susceptible to being re-traumatized. Because we, we have a, a hole where our identity should be. And it's sitting in that hole is our personal expectation for ourselves, which we learned as a child, that the best and highest thing we can do is meet other people's needs. And so we change according to the people that we meet and what they might need. And yet here we also sit with those unmet needs from our childhood of being loved 
and approved of. So we got out into the world as adults, vacuum where our identity should be, and with a strong need to be loved and approved of. And that is the perfect setup for a predator because they want someone who's gonna contort themselves to be who they want them to be. And they want to feed that need for love and approval because it will keep you motivated to change yourself. So living this way is not authentic. So we feel consistently out of place, lost, and like we do not belong anywhere. And I hear this so often from survivors. I feel lost. I don't know where I belong. I don't know what to do. And a lot of that is because we never got the chance to develop an identity that includes not only do what do we want to do, but what do we believe and what do we value. Once we discover who we are, we need to begin living in ways which are congruent with our identity. This can be frightening and it can feel very foreign to begin expressing our true selves. But we need to remind ourselves to be patient and kind to ourselves. With time and practice, we can and will become both comfortable with and successful at living an authentic life. Okay, so here are tips and strategies for living an authentic life. Focus on developing your true identity first. To do this, take plenty of time to explore beliefs, careers, and interests. Try a variety of new things and follow those which resonate with your core beliefs, moral fiber, or what you are discovering you truly believe in. Please be patient with yourself. Always seek help from safe support people or helping professionals. Take ample time to learn about and become very clear about what you want and need from yourself and others. Start expressing yourself authentically in safe settings at first. Places where you know you will be encouraged and supportive. It is important to note this is exactly what you would have done had you had a healthy childhood, right? You would be exploring things in an environment where people were supportive of you. And so we kind of have to recreate that scenario for ourselves as adults. If you experience pushback from individuals or groups regarding your authentic self-expression, consider this a red flag, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've had survivors going through this process of discovering who they truly are, and then they begin to experience significant pushback from people in their lives, and probably most likely from people in their lives who they didn't have the most healthy of relationships with, because that person like this as a chameleon. They like this as someone who met their needs, needs and desires. For us to start meeting our needs and desires, to start expressing ourselves, might not meet their needs anymore. Um, and I've had, you know, I've had survivors who have had significant marital strife when they're going through that process of identifying who they truly are. You know, this is often a time that if survivors didn't separate from their family years ago, this may be the point where they will now because families don't like them to change. It upsets the apple cart. So watch for that pushback. And if you feel that pushback, I want that to be a red flag for you. Set healthy and firm boundaries with those to ref who refuse to support you for who you are and please remember to be kind of you kind to you remember identity and belief systems can be fluid over our lifetime it is okay for you to change your mind explore new territory and alter your choices as you discover what lines up with your core beliefs you are the only one who gets to decide join in safe community with other survivors on a regular basis 
to receive the support and encouragement you need during your recovery. Sometimes we can struggle to find our authentic selves and feel overwhelmed until we come into contact with another survivor in a group. Then all of a sudden, we feel a small sense of clarity, which can, over time, help us become more aware of our authentic selves. The gift of community is powerful. There is strength in numbers. Being in community with others who have lived your pain will help you to feel stronger, less alone, and less ashamed. We have free organized virtual safe support communities where you can practice new skills and become adept at creating healthy habits. Ask us about getting plugged into a free safe support group for survivors by clicking here. So if you're, if you're looking at this as a PDF on your computer, you can click there and we'll take you where you need to go. If you are suicidal or in crisis, Always contact a qualified professional, Crisis Helpline, 911, or your local law enforcement. Our groups are not set up for crisis management as they are peer-led and free of charge. And that's all. How's the Twitter stream, Athena? It is good. Um, we have. I have one last comment. Well, we have. We have tons of just amazing. Uh oh, are you still there? I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I wonder what happened. Oh, there you are. I was like, all of a sudden, it was this weird blank, weird screen. Um, there, there have been some really great discussions going on over on in the YouTube chat box, which they don't, those comments don't save themselves um, unless Jack does a screenshot and puts them in a storify. They're just gone forever. So I want to find a way to try to save some of those. Um, the, the conversations going on over in YouTube are just, it, it's just, it's just like the Twitter chat. And, but it's like this whole other sub community. Like it's, there's so many. Anyway, it's just very, very, it's empowering to see so many people discovering what they love. Simi loves fresh raspberries and she loves coconut. She didn't know that. Um, Heather was talking when you were talking about how we did the one page and we were talking about that pushback that we received from people. Uh, she was yeah. saying the push. The <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Heather was mentioning the pushback can be scary. When you start becoming authentic, you like yourself, and when others don't, it's hard. And I just want to validate yeah. that, that that can be really hard. You guys, we're not saying that this discovering your authentic self and this healing journey and this everything that you're going through, we're not gonna sit here and paint you some roses and butterflies and rainbows and tell you that it's all going to be um, easy and fantastic and everybody's going to embrace the authentic you and all of that. We're not saying that, but what we are saying is that it is worth it. It is so worth it. It is worth it to find the real you. It's worth it to discover who you really are and who you're not and what you like and what you don't like and what you're about and what you're not about and what you prefer and what you don't prefer and and to be able to embrace it because there are so many people out there in the world that are going to love you just as you are your authentic real you your authentic self without you trying to contort or as Bobby I love this visual Bobby says we have been twisting and contorting ourselves to fit in other people's boxes our whole lives. Like we've been chopping off arms and legs just to fit in people's boxes our whole lives. And it's very true. We have been. But there are people out there. I, Bobby and I are living proof <laughs> that there are people out there in the world that love you and will like you and embrace you and accept you for who you really are, the authentic version of you. Because guess what? Bobby, when she's here with us, she's her authentic self. She's not any different in private with when it's just she and I and talking and no one else is around than she is in front of you guys. And Bobby, would you say the same thing about me? Yes, very much so. Yeah? 
Yes. Promise? I'm sorry. Yes. I said yes very much so. Okay. Do you pinky promise? Do you pinky, <laughs> do you pinky swear? Yes. Yes. Scout's honor. Okay. <laughs> oh, I know, right? I didn't get to be a scout. I didn't get to be a Girl Scout either. And that's another thing that I'm upset about about my childhood. Because <laughs> I was too busy being abused and being moved all around that I didn't get a chance to be a Girl Scout. So that's kind of a... Well, I got to be kind of a Girl Scout, but it, believe me, it included horrible abuse. So I'm not so sure that you missed out on anything incredible. It's, thank you for sharing that. I mean, I'm sorry that that happened, Bobby. That really, really, really sucks. But... I was off the air. Okay, I'll say this in closing because here we are. We're right at time. I want to get you guys out of here on time. Off the air, when we were in the green room, we were discussing. Bobby and I had this at-length discussion of the, the things that our young minds, when we're, when we're young, young, young children, the things that our brains come to the conclusion of to – yeah help us survive the abuse, I was 100% certain that if I would have been able to be a Girl Scout and didn't get moved all over the place that I wouldn't have been abused and that, I, that my life wouldn't have been horrible. I was 100% sure that the reason my life was so horrible was because I lived in a small town. Small towns are bad. Small towns are to blame. I was... I was 100% certain that it was the town that I lived in. That was the problem. It was the town I was in. That's what it was. And, and I was 100% certain that it was because I was a tomboy when I was young. Um, or that I was a girl. I should have been born a boy. Or, I, I mean, I came to all these conclusions. And th those were truths that I clung to that the reason that I was abused or the reason that my life was painful is because of A, B, C, or X, Y, Z. It wasn't where I lived. It wasn't that I didn't get to be a Girl Scout. It wasn't because I was a tomboy. It wasn't that I was born wrong and I should have been born a male instead of a female. None of that is the truth, you guys, but that's what I believed. I believed it all the way up until probably about, you know, five years ago. Like, I literally was convinced, no, I will never move my son when he's in school, if we're going to move, it's going to be only up until he's four years old. Because once he gets into preschool, we're never moving. Because I remember how hard my life was. And it was because I went to six different elementary schools. And because I moved all over the place. And because I was passed off to family member to family member to family member. It's, that's why my life was hard. Oh my gosh, you guys. That's not the authentic truth. The truth is my life was hard because I was born into a family who was abusive. <laughs> Abuse made my life hard. Not the town, not that I wasn't a Girl Scout, not that I wasn't born a boy, or, or that I was a tomboy, or not any of those, not the proximity, not the, not the zip code I lived in. <laughs> it was because my family was abusive. That's why my life was hard. But isn't it interesting how we come to these conclusions as a coping strategy? Bobby, did you ever have those things like that you believed you clung to a truth when you were little and you knew that that was the reason why things were hard? Or did you all like, did you have it all figured out? Like, I think it was more my head clung to if only I can do A, if only I can accomplish B, things things will be okay. It's because I can't accomplish that. The things are all wonky. You know, I think, yeah, I remember a lot of different things trying to prove myself. And if only I could, things would have been wonderful. But well, it just wasn't the case. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> well, it's just interesting what we what we conclude, right? The conclusions, yes. the conclusions that we come see, to. We do it with our child's mind. Exactly. You know, and as children, we can do anything we can to try and make sense of things. And now, you know, and we can't judge ourselves now at 50 years old by things I made up as my child's mind when I was six. Um, but we do. We judge ourselves all the time. And we can just let that one go. 
as soon yeah. as we see ourselves doing it. Let that one yeah. go. It's yeah. hard. Sometimes we fall back into childlike thinking, whether yeah. it's because we're triggered or because it's just what we find ourselves doing or whatever. Um, but, but you guys, I just want to encourage you that this path, this journey that you're on to find your authentic self, it may be a long journey, but I promise you it's worth it. It is worth it. Right, Bobby? Yes, you know, it's interesting because just right now, well, I think a couple minutes ago, um, I'll just posted the tweet, wouldn't it be better if I just um, kept making other people happy? And no, it wouldn't. Would it be kind of easier? Maybe. But see, the reality is, August, that you deserve to be happy and to feel at peace. So is it hard to find our identity and become authentic um, to our identity? Yes. But is it worth it? Yes. Should you do it? Yes. Because you deserve to be happy and feel at peace. You deserve to get your needs and wants met. You don't deserve to spend the rest of your life lighting yourself on fire to keep other people warm. Nope. That's a really, really, really good thing to end on. Seriously. Like, we will never become our authentic selves if we spend all of our time sacrificing ourselves on the altar of someone else's approval. Yep. We won't. Okay, guys, we want to get you out of here on time. Um, I'm Athena Moberg, and this is Bobby Parrish, and we love bringing you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. We will see you next week on the topic of verbal abuse. Thank you.